All right, beautiful. Thank you for joining me for a luxurious 60 minute restorative yoga class. My name is Holly. My pronouns are she, her. This is a beginner friendly class. It is floor based. So you will need to be able to get on and off the floor. You'll want a yoga mat or if you don't have a yoga mat, a carpeted area, a towel or a blanket is great. You don't need any fancy yoga props, but you will want some household pillows of different sizes and maybe a blanket as well. All right, so in restorative yoga, we're going to use um, breathing techniques, yoga postures in order to help us feel relaxed. Some yoga classes really focus on like the physical benefits of a yoga practice. Um, restorative yoga is more about the emotional, mental, spiritual benefits that we can receive through yoga. So rather than using a particular asana to get like the deepest stretch in our hamstrings, we're gonna use subtle movements and uh, breathing techniques in order to help us feel a little bit more restored and relaxed after class. And if you'd like, you can take a moment and set an intention for your class. Maybe thinking about something that could use a little bit of restoration in your life, whether that's a sense of calm or peace or joy or curiosity or creativity or even like silliness, patience. As you're ready, you can make your way into a comfortable seated position. You are welcome to sit crisscross applesauce or in Sukhasana easy pose. And if it feels good to have a small blanket or pillow underneath you, you are welcome to do so. Uh, today, we're going to start with a um, technique called EFT or emotional freedom technique. It um, basically uses acupuncture meridians in your body, but rather than needles, you're going to tap out different meridians in your body. Um, again, this is called EFT. Some people really uh, believe in it and use it for um, anxiety and kind of stress. Other folks think that um, there's really no relevance to it or, or nothing behind it, but um, if it speaks to you, take it. And if it doesn't speak to you, at least you tried it, right? So in general of yoga, take what works for you, leave the rest. So for EFT, I'll explain it again. We're going to be tapping out different meridians in our body um, that are associated with, um, again, like stress or how to relax or how to even out our body. Um, while we're tapping out those meridians, you're going to um, say a phrase or a sentence to yourself. So the sentence will start with something like, even though blank. So for example, even though I'm really stressed about this work deadline, right? Even though blank. I know that blank, I know that I am, you know, worthy of this job, or I know that I will get through this. So again, an example would be, even though I am really stressed out about this work deadline, I know that I am secure in my job, secure in myself, and my identity is not wrapped up in my job. That would be an example. Um, or even though I'm kind of, um, you know, struggling with this person in my life, uh, I know that I am loved and I know that I am a loving person. So thinking towards that, and, and even though blank statement, I know that blank statement. All right, you can repeat this statement to yourself as we tap through different parts of your body, which I will walk us through. Um, I will just use my own phrase for today, but again, you can use your own, but I'll just use that as an example. So sitting up nice and tall, you're gonna, um, Start with what's called the karate chop part of your hand. It can be either hand, it doesn't matter. I'm left-handed, so I'm gonna be tapping with my left hand. So I'm taking my right hand. All right, and we're gonna begin just gently tapping. Even though I am anxious about seasonal transitions, I know that this is part of the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Going from the karate chop part of your hand now to the top of your head, hairline. Even though I am anxious about seasonal transitions, I know that this is part of the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Now going to the eyebrows, repeating that same statement to yourself. Now to the outer eyes. It's a gentle tap. You don't need to be hurting yourself, right? Like think about soft, gentle tapping. Now to the under eye area. Even though I'm anxious about seasonal transitions, I know that this is part of the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Now going to the space under the nose, so between upper lip and under the nose. Chin.
collarbones and underarm armpit area. Even though I'm anxious about seasonal transitions, I know that this is part of the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Great, and as you're ready, you can bring your arms down by your side, you can close your eyes for a moment, just observe any sensations in your body. You might feel a little bit energized from the tapping. Or maybe relaxed from the statement. Or maybe nothing at all. So much of yoga is just observing what's going on without judgment or the need to explain. Let's try that again, taking your hand of choice and we're gonna tap it out, tapping out the side of your hand. Even though I'm anxious about seasonal transitions, I know that this is part of the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Going to your hairline, tapping that out. Outer, uh, pardon me, eyebrows. <laughs> Almost skipped a step. Outer eyes, even though I'm anxious about seasonal transitions, I know that this is part of the cycle of life, death, and rebirth under eye area, space between nose and upper lip, chin, collarbones. Even though I'm anxious about seasonal transitions, I know that this is part of the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. And then last, underarm armpit area, which always feels a little bit silly, especially if you're sweaty like I am. Good, take your arms down, standing up tall, sitting up tall, I should say, take another breath. Okay, and we'll do that one last time, raising the hand of your choice. We're gonna tap out the side of your hand, keeping the chest lifted, shoulders soft, jaw relaxed. Now going to your hairline, even though I'm anxious about seasonal transitions, I know that this is part of the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Now going to eyebrows. outer eyes, make sure it's a gentle tapping. Sometimes I have to remind myself that. Under eye area, even though I'm anxious about seasonal transitions, I know that this is part of the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Space between nose and lip. Chin. Collarbone. and armpit area. Even though I am anxious about the, about the coming seasonal transition, I know that this is part of the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Good, and then bring your arms down by your side. You're welcome to close your eyes if they're not already. You can also do a soft fuzzy gaze beyond the tip of your nose or pick a spot on the wall or floor in front of you to focus. So you're welcome to have your palms facing up as a symbolic gesture that you're open to whatever the rest of this class brings. So maybe not just discoveries about your body, but discoveries about your mind-body connection. You're also welcome to have your palms facing down towards your thighs as a symbolic gesture that you are grounded in the present moment, tethered in your body, especially if it's sometimes hard to feel grounded. Take an inhale through your nose, feel your body rise. So we'll do an exhale. It can be through the nose or the mouth, whichever feels good to you. Let's try that again, slow inhale through the nose. Slow exhale can be through the mouth or the nose. Do one more cleansing breath, inhale. 
Anything you want to let go of, let it go through the exhale breath. Give yourself permission to be here in this moment on your yoga mat, breathing. So sometimes in yoga, there's really only like one option in class, right? Like inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose is a great example. But again, uh, in restorative yoga, it's not so much about the physical benefits. It's about getting to know yourself better and maybe feeling a little bit more restored in body, mind, and spirit by the end of class. So whether it's a breathing exercise or a movement with our body, um, I'll try and offer many options. And as well, you're welcome to take your own variations of postures to do something else entirely, or to skip a posture and simply focus on your breath and stillness, right? This is your body, your yoga practice, your life, your choice. Um, let it be enough that you made it onto your yoga mat today. That is no small feat. You're here, you're already practicing yoga, in particular right now, practicing that pranayama limb of yoga, that breath control. Inhale, body rise. Exhale, body fall. Breathe in. And breathe out. You're welcome to keep your eyes closed or open them. We're simply going to move our neck, sitting up nice and tall. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, tilt your right ear towards right shoulder, stretching the left side neck. Take a breath here. And on your next inhale, come back to center. Exhale, shoulders down. We'll do the other side. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, bring your left ear towards left shoulder, stretching the right side neck, taking a few breaths here. On your next inhale, bring your head back to center. Exhale, shoulders down. Do that one more time. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, right ear to right shoulder. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, left ear to left shoulder. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, right ear to right shoulder. Inhale through the center. Exhale, left ear to left shoulder. Good, inhale, come back to center. And then exhale, sit up nice and tall, shoulders down, chest up. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, this time bring your chin towards your chest, squeezing into the throat, stretching the neck spine. Keep your chest lifted and your shoulders out of your ears so it's just your neck moving. On your next inhale, lift your nose and chin, come back to center. Exhale, shoulders down. Good, and now inhale, lift your nose and chin, looking back and take a breath here. And on your next inhale, come back to center, shoulders down. And just do that again. Drop your head down, chin to chest, relax your jaw. Coming back through center, lift your nose and chin, head back. Just getting a gentle range of motion in the neck here. If you're ready, come back to center. One more round, chin to chest, keep your jaw relaxed, chest lifted, just the neck moving. And then lift your nose and chin up towards the ceiling. Let your head relax back. A little bit goes a long way. You don't have to relax your head all the way back. Maybe just lift your chin one more inch. Good, come back to center. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, this time bring your chin over your right shoulder, twisting the next spine. Good, slowly come back to center. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale through your nose, bring your chin over your left shoulder. The spine moves in six different directions, right, left, twisting to each side. You'll do multiple of all of those. Good, bring your head back to center. And then just one more time, bring chin over right shoulder. My eyes are closed, but if your eyes are open, you can look for the wall behind you. Good, come back to center. And then bring your chin over your left shoulder. 
And just a little range of motion goes a long way. Beautiful, and come back to center. Um, you're always welcome to keep your eyes closed or open throughout this class. As you're ready, we're going to make our way um, onto the floor, lying on your back in Savasana. So you can lie with your head on the floor, back on the floor, arms and legs on the floor. This is a very simple yoga posture. It's a, it's a very old one. This is one of the older, like thousands of year old yoga postures. Um, it's very effective at stretching out your back. Um, although some people swear by sleeping on the floor, I'm not one of those people, right? Were it not for a yoga practice, I probably would not lie down on my floor that often, but it is really good for stretching out your back. I stayed with friends this weekend in New York and I stayed on their floor on a um, on a Japanese mat called a tatami mat. And looking at it, you would go, oh, I don't know if that's going to be thick enough, but it was actually really nice. Like not, not quite as hard as, um, you know, a yoga mat on the floor, certainly not as soft as um, a mattress, but I actually, it felt really good on my back. And um, I hope that this feels nice for your spine as you stretch and lengthen the spine. If lying with your legs straight does not feel good to your lower back, that is really normal. You are welcome to bend your knees with your feet on the floor, knees resting together. This is called collapsed bridge. and can provide some extra support to your lumbar spine. And you're also always welcome to place a small pillow or blanket underneath your lower back um, if that helps to support the lower back as well. So especially in this class, we will use um, as many or as, as little props as you'd like, right? But we're going to use household items like pillows and blankets just to help support our body a little bit more. Bend your legs if they're not already, feet on the floor. Now lift your feet off the floor, hug your thighs in towards your abdomen. You can place your hands on your shins or you can interlace your fingers. You can just roll right and left, rolling out your back. This is another nice way to use the floor to kind of give our spines a massage, especially if you sit at a computer all day or you tend to hunch forward when you're walking around, right? and lying on a hard flat surface, maybe even rolling out your back like this can be a really nice option for relaxing the back. Okay, as you're ready, you're gonna roll off to one side, press yourself up and come to a seated position. Um, we're gonna use pillows here for a side body stretch. Um, so you're going to sit facing forward. Keep in mind, I'm not mirroring you. I'm sitting with my pillows to the right of my body. I'm going to place one pillow directly next to my right hip and another one in front of that. From here, you can bend your knees with feet on the floor and you're going to come onto your side. And if you'd like, you can also place a pillow or blanket in between your knees. From here, you can take your right arm underneath you. If you're a side body sleeper, this might feel familiar to you. Sometimes restorative yoga is called sleeping yoga. Um, you can have your right arm underneath you. You can either have your left hand on the floor or if you'd like more of a left shoulder and side body stretch, you can bring your left arm overhead. So the basic idea here is with a pillow underneath our um, middle torso, we're gently stretching left side body, gently squeezing into right side body. The head is supported. And if your left arm is overhead, it's also a shoulder stretch, but it does not have to be. You can also have your arm down by your side. And if at the beginning of class you set an intention um, for what you might like restored in your life, you can think about um, doing all of these postures in service to this. So if you joined a little bit late, um, I offer that you can set an intention for your practice. So maybe you want to see in restorative yoga, maybe you'd like a little bit more peace restored to your life or curiosity or joy or patience. So for example, if what you'd like restored is a sense of 
childlike wonder. Um, you might be a little bit wondrous in your yoga practice and experiment maybe with making shapes with your body that are new to you or feel a little bit silly. Or if you're looking to restore a little bit of patience to your life, you might practice being patient with your body and your breath, even if it doesn't move exactly how you want it to. We'll hold here for three more minutes. Notice where you might be holding on to tension in your body. Start to relax a little bit deeper. And if the shape you're making or the um, you know pillows that you're using like are not comfortable or don't allow you to relax, you're welcome to adjust how you're sitting or lying and then hop back into stillness. You can also do this posture right like without pillows or props, simply lying on one side if you want with your arm overhead. And for some folks, that's enough of a lengthening to the side torso, so keep that in mind. I like pillows in this class, but you certainly don't need them. you're feeling comfy cozy as you are, maybe you're even drifting into a nap, you're welcome to stay here. Otherwise, we can take this into an optional spine and abdominal wall twist. If your left arm is draped overhead, you can slowly slide that left arm back down outside of left shoulder. You're gonna gently lift your head off your pillow and unslide your right arm out from under you. And then as you're ready, keeping your hips stacked, you'll start to tilt your abdomen down towards the floor. You can have your elbows bent, cactus like goalposts. Um, depending on your mobility and also just maybe the proportions of your body, you're welcome to have your forehead on your um, pillow. You can look to the left in the same direction as your knees, or you can look away from your knees, looking to the right with left ear down. For some people, that feels really good as a spine twist. For me, at least on this side, that's a little too intense. Um, but remember, lots of options here. I like this spine twist. A lot of times when we do supine spine twists, right, they're on our, on our backs, but this kind of inverts it a little bit. So you're on your front, supported by pillows, so it's not too much pressure, weight on the abdomen. We'll hold here for two more minutes. Once again, just noticing where you might be holding on to tension. Let yourself relax just a little deeper. Let the floor hold you up.
a slow inhale through your nose all the way down to the base of your spine. A slow exhale, relaxing through the lower back, middle back, upper back. At your own slow pace, you can walk your hands in underneath your shoulders. Take your time pressing yourself up. You can sit up for a moment if you'd like and do any little stretches with your body that feels good. I'm kind of rolling out my shoulders. Um, we'll go right into the other side. You are welcome to simply turn around and face the other way. <laughs> for the sake of not facing away from you, I'm going to move my pillows. <laughs> Again, you can just turn to the other side. And so this time with your left hip facing your pillows, going to come onto your left side with knees bent. And again, I like to have a pillow in between my knees as well so that my hips feel comfortable. You can take your left arm in between the pillows, resting your head on your top pillow. And then you have an option to have your hand to your side or right arm overhead, stretching the right side body. Um, this side might feel very different from the other side. It does for me. That's okay. We're not symmetrical. I know some of you, I'm sure, are tired of hearing me say this, but nowhere in ancient yogic texts does it say that yoga is about symmetry. Yoga is about self-realization, right? Getting to know yourself better. It's about community care, being in sangha or a spiritual community. It's about taking care of ourselves, each other, and our planet. Sometimes a byproduct, particularly of an asana-focused yoga practice, is that we do even out a little bit. This is a byproduct. Again, in your restorative yoga class, that everything you do be part of, kind of refilling your cup, filling up your well, whatever metaphor works for you. Perhaps what the intention you set, what you wanted restored at the beginning of class was peace. Let this be a peaceful posture, right? Doesn't need to be the deepest stretch, doesn't need to look a certain way or even feel a certain way. This practice can be really subtle. Sometimes we think we're only, or at least I think I'm only doing the yoga posture right if I can like really feel it and it's really challenging me. I actually sometimes think posture. Or maybe I don't feel that much physically at first. I'm really just focusing on my breath. Sometimes those are the most effective. And hold here for two more minutes.
you have an option to stay here in your side body stretch or any other shape that's speaking to you. You can also take this into a spine twist if you'd like. If your right arm is overhead, you're going to carefully slide your right hand down towards the floor. Lift your head slightly, take your left arm out from under you, keeping your hips stacked right on top of left. Start to tilt your abdomen down towards the mat. Again, you can have your elbows bent or down by your side. You can look in the same direction as your knees. You can bring your forehead to the floor, or you can look away from your knees. And again, the side might feel a little different, but that's okay. We'll hold here for two more minutes. This abdominal wall twist is also good for digestion. And while well, I do suggest that, you know, restorative yoga is focused on the um, less physical aspects of yoga, um, it's true that like our body affects our mood, right? So when, when we have better digestion, often that helps us be in a better mood. So that's a, a great example of how um, like our body and mind are not divorced from one another, right? They very much work in tandem. And yoga helps us, um, I think, to like have them work a little bit better together. Take a slow inhale, breathing in through the nose, all the way to the base of the spine. Slow exhale, softening to the lower back, middle back, upper back, and shoulders. Mindfully take your arms under your shoulders and at your own pace, press yourself up. And again, seated forward, you can roll your shoulders forward and backward a few times. Seeing any other motions with your body that feel good. Next, we're going to go into a um, one-legged assisted frog pose. You're going to keep one of your pillows um, on your mat, and you can remove the other ones. Um, and I'll show you what this looks like. You're going to start to lie on your abdomen. And here, you can lie with your chest and um, on your pillow, depending on how long your torso is or how much um, support you'd like, right? You can have pillows underneath your head, but you want your hips on the floor. And then from here, you're going to keep your left leg straight and then take your right knee out to the right. So um, for half frog pose, um, one variation of the posture is to have your hip and knee in line and then your knee and ankle in line with your toes pointing away from you. Um, this is a nice hip opener. It's not accessible to everyone. You can lower your legs. Your knee is still bent, but the knee is lower than the hip. And if it helps, you can also place pillows underneath your right hip, under your knee, under your foot, anywhere else that might use a little, could use a little extra support. Feel free to grab a pillow or blanket. Um, and again, you can have your forehead on your pillows or you can look in the same direction as your right knee. So looking to the right. 
I think maybe for some faces lying with your head on a pillow feels really good, but for like the the slant of like my forehead to nose that has never felt good in a yoga posture, even in like child's pose, that can be kind of uncomfortable for me. But for you, if it feels good to have your forehead on um, the pillow, you're welcome to do so. This is a gentle hip opener. Full frog pose is when both knees are open. It's a really big hip opener. Um, this is a nice place to start where again, we're, we're getting that rotation to the hip. We're also putting a little bit of pressure on the abdomen. Slight back bend, the chest supported by the pillow. Actually quite a bit going on. Again, you want just a subtle stretch, not a point of pain. We'll hold here for two more minutes. The slow inhale through your nose, from the crown of your head to your spine, to your legs, to your toes. Slow exhale, softening through the feet, the legs, the hips, the abdomen, the shoulders, the neck, the head. If your right knee is bent, slowly straighten the right leg back down. We're going to go into the other side of our frog pose. And you can simply bend your left knee out to the left. I am going to move my pillows so that I can continue to face you. Again, this side might feel different. You might need a different combination of pillows or blankets. The idea is you're lying on your abdomen with a supported chest and the left knee out this time, opening through the left hip. You can take a little bit of trial and error to find the right pillow combo that works for you. Again, you can have your forehead on a pillow, or you can look to the left in the same direction as your knee. Really remarkable. I have um, plants in my windowsill, and in particular, I have just like a basil plant and a mint plant. And I was gone this weekend, and um, kind of knew coming back, like, oh, they might be dead. And I came back, and they weren't quite dead, but they were on the brink, especially the mint plant. The leaves were so wilted. The first thing I did when I came home was I poured water into that plant, and then the next day, these, you know, the leaves are starting to look better. And then today I poured water into it again. And these, you know, these mint leaves that were looking really sad, all of a sudden those same leaves are like big and boisterous and um, bountiful again. 
Um, I'm reminded that, you know, sometimes when we're feeling really down or really wilted, uh, it might be like a long process to repair, but a lot of times, like my mint plant, all you need is a little bit of sunshine, a lot of water, a little bit of rest and relaxation, right? A little bit of care for yourself. You'd be allowing other people to care for you as well. A little bit more water, a little bit more sun, and you're back. Good to go. Take an inhale through your nose, breathing from the crown of your head, your torso and hips, through the leg, all the way to the tips of the toes. And a soft exhale, relaxing through the arches of the feet, the calves, the thighs, the glutes, the abdomen, the shoulders, the head. Slowly walk your hands in underneath your shoulders and press your, pardon me, straighten your left leg first. That's my bad. Straightening the left leg, then press yourself up. You're going to come up into a seated position. And next, we're going to take a, a wide legged supported child's pose. So, of course, you can do this posture without props, but if you'd like, first things first, if you have tight, ankles, toes, or knees, you can roll up your yoga mat a little bit so that there's extra padding under any delicate areas. And also simply place a thin pillow or blanket under the lower body. From here, if you'd like, bring your big toes together and knees apart. You're welcome to sit back on your heels like I'm doing. You can also place a pillow or pillows between your calves and thighs. That just helps everything to feel a little bit more supported. And then from here, you can lower down. You can either have um, no pillows and props, right? Just forehead to floor. Or you can place as many pillows as you'd like under your chest, under your head. You can have your arms forward. You can also have your arms down by your side, palms facing up. Okay, and we're just going to hold here for two minutes, stretching out through the lower back, middle back, upper back the hips and inner thighs.
Take a slow inhale, feel your ribs expand. Slow exhale, ribs contract. Mindfully walk your hands in under your shoulders, press your palms into the floor, and press yourself up, sitting upright. Can remove any pillows from underneath you. And we're just going to take a moment here, sitting upright. Um, if you like me, rolled up your mat, you can unroll your mat. And sit forward with your legs in any position that feels good to you. I'm actually going to bend my knees feet on the floor, hands rest behind me, and kind of windshield wiper out my legs. You can also have your legs straight, bend one knee straight in the other. Great. Our last little supported posture um, or supported part of class is we're going to use a pillow or pillows for different versions of back bends. And the first one is supported bridge. So um, you've, you've probably seen bridge pose before, which is using your body strength to lift your hips. But in this version, we get to use a pillow to lift our hips, right? So it's a lot more relaxed. So you're gonna sit with a pillow behind you and then you're gonna sit your butt onto that pillow. And then the idea here is feet on the floor about hip width distance, knees rest together. You're gonna start to lie back, elbows to floor, and then bring your head to the floor. Um, and it can take a little bit of trial and error. You might want to add an extra pillow for under your lower backs. So there's extra support there. If it feels good to have a small pillow or blanket underneath your head, you're welcome to do that as well. Again, the idea is the hips are lifted. And then... And then your shoulders relax down onto the floor. Again, feet about hip width distance, knees can rest together or be slightly apart. You can have your hands on your abdomen, have your arms down by your side or out to the side. Let your abdomen rise and fall with your breath. Feel your feet on the floor. Shoulders and head on the floor. So in a lot of, you know, bridge poses, right, there's a lot of glute activation in order to keep the hips lifted, which is really good for glute strength. Uh, but this is a nice way to still have that sensation of the hips being a little bit higher than the heart, and the knees higher than the hips, right, without having to, like, tense all the muscles in your body. We'll hold here for one more minute. Excuse me, I have a tickle in my throat.
A slow inhale, breathing into your chest and into your abdomen. Feel your torso rise with the inhale. A slow exhale, softening through the abdomen, through the chest. Let your body fall with the exhale. Keep your head on the floor or on a pillow. If there's a pillow under your head. Press your heels into the floor. Take your arms down by your side, palms facing down. Pressing your heels, palms, and shoulders down. Squeeze your glutes, lift your hips, and then remove the pillows from underneath your butt. And then take your hips back down. And again, for Savasana, you can keep your knees in bridge with your knees resting together, or you can have your legs long down by your side. Even if that bridge pose felt um, fairly subtle to you, um, you might still notice, right, a sort of change in, let's say, blood flow or temperature um, or awareness when you lower your hips back down, right? We're in that, that supported bridge pose. The hips were a little bit higher than the heart. The knees were a little bit higher than the hips, right? So we have a lot of um, blood in our heart space. And now as we lower down into a more neutral position, you might feel your body shift in some way. It's really remarkable. I find these posh, the more people I talk to, the more, you know, the more I learn from other you know, students of yoga, fellow students of yoga. It's like, not only do all of these postures affect each of us differently or feel different differently in each of our bodies, but even the same person can experience a posture differently, class to class, or even breath to breath. Again, there's no right or wrong answer to that. It's just so interesting to watch, you know, posture that might always feel really good to you one day doesn't feel so good. And that doesn't necessarily mean anything or mean that you can't try it the next class. But as we become a little bit more aware, then we become a little bit more aware, right? And then sometimes as we become really aware, can be tempting to try to make meaning out of everything or judge everything. And I think then yoga calls us into a place of less judgment, more compassion. When I was in my yoga teacher training, I became so aware of my body that I became very aware that one leg was slightly longer than the other, which is true for most humans and frankly hasn't really affected me that much in life, but I could like feel it acutely. And it was um it was quite a a lesson in um observing without freaking out for lack of a for lack of a better term, right? We can be aware of our body, we can be aware of our aches and pains and our um, areas for growth and where we're loose and where we feel tight. Um, we can know all of that without, you know, assigning judgment to it, right? We can just be compassionate observers in our own experience. Bend your knees if they're not already. You can lift your feet off the floor. Once again, place your hands on your shins or you can interlace your fingers. And then roll your back out again. Feels good. Okay, and then you're going to roll to one side. Press yourself up. And our final posture is just a um, another little back bend. So you're gonna sit facing away from your pillows. You're gonna place one pillow directly behind you, and then one or two maybe slightly pillow, slightly smaller pillows behind that. With knees bent, feet on the floor, you can lower back over your pillows. So now the idea is your butt is on the floor, right? There's a um, an opening through the heart space and abdomen feeling compression of the spine. Make sure that you have at least one pillow under your head so your head is not flying all the way off. For this posture, you can keep your feet on the floor, knees resting together in your collapsed fridge. You can have your arms straight, which is called, um, this is called supported fish. You can also do supine butterfly where you let your knees open up. And so the soles of your feet come together. This is a hip opener. I feel like I've had enough hip opening for this class. I'm gonna do supported fish with my legs straight. 
there's many options for you. You can have your arms down by your side or out to the side in a big expansive gesture. And again, just return whatever that is, that intention that you set for yourself at the beginning of class. What are you looking to restore? And let this final heart opener be in service to that restoration. We'll hold here for two more minutes. Give your body permission to relax. Let the floor hold you up. And also know that if your body is not quite cooperating, you're repeatedly telling your jaw, relax, relax, and your jaw is still a little tense. That's okay too. It's not good or bad. But I think it is a victory that you're observing victory whenever we can be compassionate with ourselves. So often if I find that, you know, no matter how much I send my breath to my shoulder and tell my shoulder to relax, my shoulder's not relaxing, I might just imagine what it will feel like for my shoulder to relax. Or if I find my mind looping back to that one thought, no matter how many breathing exercises I do, and no matter how much meditation I do, my mind is still looping back to that worry or care. I might just imagine what it will feel like to let go of that worry or care. And this visualization, this imagination, this curiosity or hope for the future, it's a really handy tool in the yoga toolbox. And not just the ability to move or to balance or to breathe, the ability just to be a little curious about what comes next. So maybe envision a space where the body relaxes. Maybe the energy, the mental energy shrinks so that your heart space can grow. Take an inhale from the crown of your head through your arms, fingertips. Through your torso, legs, toes. Exhale, softening through the hands, the feet, the chest, the shoulders, the head. If your knees are out to the side in a butterfly pose, that hip opener. With or without the use of your hands, you can bring your knees back together, feet on the floor. If your legs are straight and fish pose, bend your knees, feet on the floor, knees rest together. Taking your arms down by your side, palms face down. Press your heels, palms and shoulders down. Squeeze your glutes, lift your hips, and remove the pillow from underneath your lower middle back, hips down. For final savasana, you are welcome to keep pillow or pillows underneath your head or remove them. You can also place a blanket over your body. You can close your eyes. You can open your arms and legs as much or as little as you want. These shapes that we make with our body certainly have physical benefits. They can also be um, meaningful or metaphorical. So for example, if you tend to kind of shrink in the presence of others, this might be an opportunity to get really big and open your arms and legs and take up space, even if you've been told throughout your life that it's not your place to take up space, right? This can be a place for that. Or if you tend to be really open all the time and then you're left depleted at the end of the day, it might feel good even to lie on your side, maybe bring your arms and legs closer together and let this just be some kind just for you on your yoga mat, right? Not giving to others, simply giving to yourself. And the shapes that we make have many physical benefits, so even emotional, psychological, spiritual benefits. And they can also just be 
meaningful or a little secret or secret handshake between you and yourself. Take an inhale, feel your body rise. Anything you'd like to let go of, let it go. That exhale can be through the nose or the mouth. Trust yourself. Inhale. Exhale. Again, it can be through the mouth or the nose. This is a practice of trusting that you know what's best for your body. One more time. Inhale, body rise. Exhale, body fall. You are so very alive and you are so very loved. Stay in your final savasta for as long as you'd like. And even take a nap. When you do choose to get up, I encourage you to get up in a way that feels like it's part of your yoga practice. Get up slowly and mindfully, especially if you have low blood pressure, sit up for a while before you stand up because we've been on the floor for a while. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening. And as my mint plant is reminding me, when in doubt, drink some water, get some sunshine, take some rest. Hope to practice with you soon. Bye, y'all.